Welcome everybody. I'm so glad that you decided to embark on this yoga adventure today. My name's Lisa Hannigan and I have been teaching yoga for almost 15 years now. I cannot believe that. But what's happened is over the years I've learned a lot about my body <laughs> and I've actually hurt myself doing yoga because I needed to learn and I'm like a lot of people I like to push myself sometimes to my detriment so what I'm aiming to do today is teach you a few things so that you can practice yoga and feel confident that you're not gonna hurt yourself so let's get started I want you to start by finding it's very helpful if you have a couple blocks because those are like arm extenders and leg extenders. And I have two blankets and it's, I have these um, Indian blankets or Mexican blankets that work really well because they're wool and they, um, they don't move very well when you're sitting on them. Some blankets, if they're that really new, funky nylon stuff. They'll move when you're sitting on them. So I'm gonna use two of them and I'm gonna bring them so that the point is forward, like so. And then I'm gonna sit on the edge of that point and then I'm gonna sit cross-legged. Now for some of you, cross-legged won't work and so you may have to sit on the blanket like this with your feet back and maybe even a block under there to make it super high because that's sometimes that's best for your knees a lot of times guys like to sit like this because us women we have a little bit more open hips but um, I'm gonna sit on two blankets and the goal is actually to get your knees lower than your pelvis and I want you to think, okay, I'm going to try and get, you have those two bumps back there. Your, I call them your sits bones. And I want you to sit slightly in front of your sits bones so that it feels like your pelvis is slightly tilted forward. I'll sit to the side so you can see that. So a lot of people sit like this, and that's really not healthy for your low back or your hips. So if you can get higher and sit slightly in front of your sits bones, then you have this nice curve in your low back and you can sit up taller. Now, you don't wanna let your ribs stick out here. You wanna slowly kind of draw those together so that you can sit up nice and tall and you can feel your spine nice and tall. And a lot of times when you first start out, this position doesn't feel comfortable at all. So get your hips as high as you'd like. And sometimes people's hips don't allow it, their knees don't allow it, so then you just extend that leg or both legs. And find a nice seat. So we always start with a little bit of a centering. So I invite you to just close your eyes and simply Notice your breath. That's my puppy, and I'm gonna put him in with my husband. Go. And really notice your inhalation. And your exhalation and just notice how it feels to just be sitting here and watch and watching your breath with every inhale just feel like your spine lengthens a little bit more up through the top of your head. 
With every exhale, perhaps you can feel your connection to the floor, to the blankets, the floor, and the earth. Do you feel grounded? Yoga means binding together of mind, body, and soul. So when we take time to really focus just on ourselves, it help us to, helps us to meld all those parts of ourselves together and we feel more complete. That's the idea anyway. Now please bring your hands together in front of your heart space. May we all notice and appreciate the many blessings that we've been given. And please lower your hands, open your eyes. And we're gonna start actually on our backs. So we've talked a little bit about that curve. So just move your blankets off to the side for now. We may revisit them and lay on your backs with your knees bent, your feet flat. And I want you to just notice now, when you lay down, you should have a little curve under your low back so that it feels like you could perhaps have a small rodent run underneath there. I don't know if you can see mine. That's all good. I want you to keep that, but I want you to engage the core muscles a little bit. So when I really try and find that big curve, my ribs stick out. So I wanna just kinda of draw them together and think to myself, I'm gonna lengthen my spine. Maybe this curve gets a little bit less, but I'm activating these muscles. You can even feel them activate. It's a little bit harder to talk and to breathe when you're activating them, and then go ahead and relax for a moment. Now we're gonna do something that I call abdominal bracing. And I want you to, this is something you can do to strengthen. When I talk about core, I'm talking about front and back and sides. So we're, we're strengthening core all around. So bring your knees up right above your pelvis flex the feet and then bring your hands right on your thighs here kind of right in the middle and i want you to think of that keeping that curve but activating those core muscles again and then press with your hands into your thighs and resist with your thighs and you'll feel more action here so i'm pushing away and up a little bit and i'm resisting with my legs Sorry about Ted, he's wanting to really help me today. <laughs> and keep breathing, keep noticing the length. And then relax a minute. Hug your knees into your chest. You can let your core muscles relax here. This is a super good way to strengthen your core muscles. Okay, so now bring the knees back up, flex the feet. Think of activating the legs. It's like you're giving the bones in your legs a squeeze with all the leg muscles. Activate the core, hands here, press away and up, and lengthen. And breathe. If you're having a hard time breathing, you're probably trying too hard, just back off a lot. You don't have to work so hard here. Good, and then relax, hug your knees in again. Big breath, feel everything expanding as you breathe. And then come back into that position Flex the feet, hug the muscles to the bone. 
Bring both hands to the right thigh this time. I just stack one on top of the other and then press up and away. And this time extend the left leg. You're flexing the feet. You can lower it a little bit if you can hold that. You're not pressing all the way down, but you're activating those core muscles. And then bring the knee back in, switch. So both hands on the left thigh, press up and away, and extend the right leg. Keep flexing the feet, really activating the core, and bring it back in. Hug the knees in, relax everything. Take a deep breath. Typically, I would do a few more of those, but I'm gonna have you just roll to your right side now and come on up to all fours position. And when I say all fours, I want your hands, actually your wrists, right under your shoulders. And I want you to spread your hands wide. I call it like sunshine. You don't wanna spread them so wide that you're actively, it's just, just kind of wide, not stretching wide, just wide. And that distributes the weight. And then think, okay, I'm gonna push into the finger mounds and the fingertips and claw the floor. And what that does is it kind of lifts this part of the hand. So you want all of this grounded and the fingertips grounded and not just all the weight right in your wrist, because that's really hard on your wrist. Okay, so try it. Claw the floor, spread the weight on all parts of the hands, knees right under hips. And then we're gonna do what we call cow-cat. So I'm gonna have you start with the tail and you're just gonna slowly lift the tail and then slowly curve the back one vertebrae at a time and lastly, lift the head. Now, I don't want you to lift it so much that it's straining, just kind of in line with your spine. Good, and then go the opposite direction. So start with the tail, start to round it, and then one vertebrae at a time, work all the way up. The last thing that happens is you tuck your chin to cat pose. Feels like I'm pushing my hands down and away. Good, and then back to cow. Start with the tail. Slowly work all the way up. Last thing to happen is lifting and extending through the top of the head. And one more time, cat. So start with the tail. Round, 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 push away. Tuck the chin. and then come to a flat back position. Keep the toes curled under, and then walk your hands back, and then just see if you can sit your weight back onto your heels. This is gonna be a stretch in your feet. Now, if it's too painful, just go where it feels like a nice stretch in your feet, in your toes. If you can, sit all the way back. Think about keeping that curve in your low back lengthening up through your spine, stretching out the feet. This is called lightning bolt pose. Because <laughs> sometimes it feels like lightning zapping through your feet. But it's a really good stretch for plantar fasciitis, all, all kinds of feet things. I never knew before yoga that there were so many muscles in your foot that needed to be stretched and strengthened. Okay, come back to all fours, hands right under shoulders. If you looked at the, I have many wrinkles here, but you want these wrinkles from your wrist to your hand to be parallel with the front of your mat. So some of us have a tendency to turn the hands in or out. So just be aware of that, notice it, and turn them so they're parallel. Good, now extend your right leg and I don't want you to lift the leg high. I want you to keep the toes pointed down. I want you to think, okay, all those core muscles that we strengthen, I'm gonna really hold them tight. In fact, you can even see, am I drawing the ribs 
towards each other. I still have, I'm not scooping the tailbone down like we did in cat, but I'm squeezing the buttocks muscles to hold the leg there. Good, now if you feel pretty stable, you could go ahead and extend the left arm as well. Think long spine all the way through the top of the head and then bring the hand down, bring the knee down. Good, extend through the left leg, same way, claw the floor, really activate the core muscles so you feel stable and maybe extend the right arm and breathe. One more breath. Bring the hand down, bring the knee down. And then this time, stretch the feet long. Make sure the toes are pointing straight back. Press the all 10 toes down and then very carefully sit back on your heels again. Now if it's too painful with your knees, you can always grab a blanket. And I like to snug the blanket in behind the knees to sit back and that gives you a little more space behind your knees and sometimes it feels better if you have knee issues. So just be aware of that. You have to do what feels good for you. It feels like a nice stretch, but not too much. Press all 10 toes down. If, you, if um, it feels like too much, just stay up like this. This is an ankle stretch. Good, keep the curve in the low back. One more breath. And then please make your way back to all fours position. I'm gonna have you go ahead and step your right foot up between your hands. Now this is where you might wanna use your blocks. If your hamstring doesn't allow it, you can just add a little length to your arms and get a little higher. Now I'm gonna teach you something here. So. I want you to think about lifting the arch, but keeping the big toe mound down, the little toe mound down, and both sides of the heel down, but trying to lift the arch. It feels like you're making your foot a little bit shorter. And then I'm gonna have you think about activating your legs and drawing your rib cage back, but trying to add a little bit of a curve in the low back. So that's why you want height, so you can feel that curve. And then you're gonna hug your heel and your knee towards each other. And then maybe you bring your hands to your thigh. You can balance there, keep hugging the heel and the knee towards each other. Keeping the hips square, maybe activating the glutes, lengthening through your spine to lift upright. Good, and then go ahead and touch down either to the blocks or to the mat. And this time, lift the back knee. You're gonna be on the ball of your left foot. You're gonna think, okay, I'm hugging the feet and the legs towards each other. I'm keeping the hips square to the front. And I'm lengthening my spine keeping the curve in the low back. This is called a deep lunge. You should feel weight in both feet. Try out, just try lifting your hands for just a moment and see what it feels like. See if you can find the balance. Good, and then lower the back knee. Finding the blocks again. I'm gonna have you slide your hips back. Now, I want you to just slide them back far enough that your hips are over your knee. So your hips are over the left knee, and then you're gonna flex the right foot. This is why you wanna, you may, you may be like this because your hamstrings are tight. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a good stretch. People always tell me, I can't do yoga because I'm so not flexible. Well, that's why you need yoga, right? So again, think, short foot, you're activating all parts of your foot. You keep a little baby bend in your knee, and then you're hugging the heel and the knee towards each other. 
and then think rib cage back, sits bones back and apart to find that curve. And then maybe you can stretch over the knee. Good, bend back into the front knee. And then take that leg back. And let's do the same thing on the other side. So left foot steps forward. So this foot and this knee are hip distance apart. I think all parts of this foot are grounded. I'm trying to lift the arch, make that short foot. I'm hugging the heel and the knee towards each other. Maybe bring the hands to the front knee. You'll feel a stretch here in the hip flexor. Hips stay square, think rib cage back. And then I try to move the sits bones back and apart to keep that curve in the low back and come more upright. Good, touch down again, either to the floor or to the blocks. Lift the back knee, spread the weight all across the ball of the foot. The heel lifts super high. Think hug feet and legs, squeeze the glutes. Rib cage back, sits bones back and apart, lengthening all the way up through the top of the head. The spine lengthens, deep lunge, you can play. See about lifting the hands just a little bit, see if you're balanced. Good, and then lower the back knee. Slide the hips back over the knee. Little baby bend in the left knee. Flex the foot, activate, think rib cage back. I'm gonna move the sits bones back and apart to keep that curve and lengthen out. You should feel no pain here, just a really nice, good stretch. This is called runner's lunge. We have a special lingo in yoga. Good, bend back into the front knee and step that knee back. Let's, let's try downward facing dog. So instead of having your hands right under the shoulders for down dog, you're gonna move them forward about a hand width. You're gonna keep your knees hip distance apart. And then you're just gonna lift the knees with a big bend in the knees and think, okay, arms stay lifted, arm pits stay lifted. I move the whole rib cage back and then I try and lift just the sits bones up towards the ceiling with that nice engagement in the rib cage. And then just see where it takes you. Maybe your knees will straighten all the way, maybe not. If you've been doing yoga for at least 15, 20 years like I have, perhaps you can straighten all the way. Just keep thinking rib cage back, sits bones back and apart, armpits lifted. Good, one more breath. And then go ahead and bring the knees down, but bring them a bit wider and bring the big toes together. And then just sit back to what we call a child's pose. So just let your arms relax. I like to stack my hands to bring my forehead on. Sits bones, sit back. Some people, this isn't comfortable for their knees, and so they may stay here, which is perfectly acceptable. You decide, you get to decide. Good, and then come on back up and make your way back to that downward facing dog. So start with the hands, claw the floor, pointer finger mound stays down. Lift the knees, shift the weight back. Think armpits lift, rib cage moves back, and then I lift the sits bones back and apart to move into the full pose. Now you know, you'll know you know if you have the hands and the feet in the right place, if you come forward and you can hold the rib cage just where it is and come forward and you're in a plank pose. Good. <laughs> lengthening, lower your knees. Now watch me, this is a, this may not be 
a smooth transition. So maybe you'll just plunk down, but I'm gonna think, I'm gonna hug my elbows in, I'm gonna aim to keep my rib cage back as I lower my heart down between my hands. Good. When you get there, stretch your feet long, press the feet down, activate the legs, and think rib cage back again. I'm not gonna scoop the tailbone under. I'm gonna keep that curve in my low back, but I'm gonna lift up to what we call cobra pose. I'm, I'm not gonna use my hands so much as my back, I'm strengthening my back muscles. And lower back down. Let's do that again. So put your forehead down. Think rib cage back. Hug the feet and legs. Sit the bones back and apart. And then lift to cobra. Maybe use your hands if you want. And lower back down. Good. Now curl the toes under. Push back to all fours. Keep pushing the sits bones back and apart. Think rib cage back, lift the knees, move into a downward facing dog. Rib lengthening all the time. Good, and then come on down to your knees again. And this time come on up to standing. And I'm gonna have you take a wide stance on your mat. So bring your feet, if you brought your arms out, your wrists are approximately above your ankles. Good, and then relax your hands on your thighs for now. I'm gonna have you just bend the knees and slowly swivel the heels in so your toes are pointing out about 45 degrees, 30 to 45 degrees, and I want your knees to be pointed the same direction as your feet, as your toes. And then bring your hands on your thighs. I'm gonna have you think of this rib cage engagement. So it's like you're drawing the whole rib cage back and then you're gonna hug the feet and legs towards each other, move the sits bones back and apart and lengthen your spine. Good, now with your hands here, I just want you to think Nice long spine. I'm going to twist to the right and exhale back to the middle. Inhale, twist to the left. Feel the, the whole front and back kind of working on this. Exhale back to center and then straighten the legs. Move the feet back out. Now we're gonna use the same principles here. Even though the feet are parallel to the end of the mat, you're gonna hug the feet and legs towards each other. You'll feel it on the inner thigh. And then you're gonna think rib cage back, sits bones back and apart. Good. Now you're gonna try and keep that as you turn the right foot out and bend into the front knee. Bring your hands to your hips for now. Think, hug the feet and legs towards each other. Don't let this hip pop forward. I want you to think, rib cage back, back. Lean forward a little bit. Think, rib cage back. And then I'm gonna lengthen my spine, bring my sits bones, including this one, back and apart, and then come back upright. So I still feel that little curve. I'm really hugging my feet. And then bring your arms out. This is called Warrior Two or Virabhadrasana Two. Notice how I'm still trying to activate those feet. Good. And then we're gonna bring your hands to your hips, straighten your front leg, turn that foot forward, and we'll switch sides. So left foot turns out, hug the feet and legs towards each other, bend into the front knee. Notice if this hip wants to pop forward, move it back, hug the rib cage back, sits bones move back and apart to come up right, and then add in the arms, warrior two. Hugging, this leg is so active, I'm drawing towards the heel. 
Good, hands to the hips, straighten the front leg as you turn the foot in. So when you, when you transition, I want you to notice, you're not just turning the foot out, right? The whole leg turns out. So we're going back to the first side. Hands, the hips sink, bend into the front knee, hugging the feet and legs towards each other. Make a ribcage back, sits bones back and apart. Good, now bring the elbow to the knee. You'll feel more stretch here. This hip still doesn't pop forward. I'm hugging. Maybe extend the arm up, the top arm. Think rib cage back, sits bones back and apart. I'm hugging and maybe bring the arm by the ear, palm facing down. You'll feel a nice stretch all the way from your fingertips up here, clear to the little toe side of that back foot. This is called the Parjva Kanasana. Good, stretch the arm up, come upright, hands to the hips, straighten the leg, turn the leg and foot forward, switch sides. Hug the feet and legs, rib cage back, sits bones back and apart as you bend the front knee, hugging, hugging, maybe elbow to knee. I think this is in a line, your spine is so, you have to be so mindful of your spine. You wanna keep that curve. So if you scoop the tailbone under, your, your hip's gonna fall forward and you're gonna feel pinchy in your low back. So this is so important for you to keep really zipped up in your um, rib cage. And then you can add the arm if you want. Maybe stretch it by the ear, palm facing down. Feel the hugging action, big stretch. All the way through the top of the head. Fingertips all the way to the little toe side. Good, stretch the arm up, come upright, straighten the leg. Turn the foot, feet forward. Just step your feet forward together for a moment. Shake it out, because we're gonna keep going there. So take a wide stance again. One more pose here. Turn the right foot out. Hug. Sits bones back and apart as you zip up the spine. Get really tall through the top of your head. Arms out. This time the front leg's straight. And you're just gonna see about leaning forward. Maybe your hand comes to your thigh. Or maybe you can slide it to your shin. You can use a block here to bring your hand onto. This is called triangle pose, but I'm still thinking sits bones back and apart, lengthening, using the core. Triangle pose, trikonasana. Lengthen all the way through the top of the head. Don't let your chin poke out. I want you to think chin back, lengthening. It's the head's just like an extension of your spine. Good, and then come on up. If you're using the block, bring it with you. Turn that foot forward. Turn the left foot out. You can place the block there. Hug feet and legs, short feet, arms out. Rib cage back, sits bones back and apart. Triangle pose. If you're leaning forward to get as low as you can, then you're doing it wrong. You wanna keep your, your torso moving over your front foot. So just come higher if, it's, if you're moving forward or back. Just keep it high, keep hugging the legs. Lengthening. One more breath and come on up. Turn the foot forward, step the feet together. Come to the front of your mat and bring your blocks with you. So there's certain things I say over and over again, but believe me, I've learned this from experience that if you learn to get in the right habits, then the whole 
um, practice feels really safe and very therapeutic. Actually, every pose is therapeutic. If you're doing it the right way, it shouldn't feel not therapeutic. Good. Stand with your feet hip distance apart. And then think short feet, hug the feet and legs, rib cage back, sits bones back and apart, and then lengthen up through your spine. This should feel like work. I'm, I'm working hard to keep this connection. Good, and then I'm just gonna bend forward, bring my hands to the blocks, move them back to the outside of my feet. And then step your right foot back to that deep lunge position. I'm gonna have you all use your blocks here because I'm gonna have you try certain things. So think hugging feet and legs. I'm gonna keep the sits bones back and apart. Maybe bring the hands to the front thigh. If you feel unstable here, lower the back knee. It's always an option. And then see, maybe you can come upright. This back leg is really working hard. You might have to bend the knee a little bit to keep the hips square. Let your arms dangle. And then maybe stretch the arms up. This is called Crescent Warrior. Good, and it might look like this for you. Anjanayasana. Good, and then touch down. Step forward. This is called Uttanasana or forward fold. Keep noticing, do you, do you, you still have the squeeze on your legs? Maybe you'll have to bend your knees a little bit to think sits bones back and apart, but, but rib cage back to feel like I'm really um, long through the spine. And then maybe I can fold a little deeper. Take a breath or two. Good, and then step your left foot back for that same pose. Hug the feet and legs. Back leg is super engaged. Squeeze the glutes. Think rib cage back, sits bones stay back and apart. Maybe bring the hands to the front thigh. If that feels good, let them dangle. You can bend the back knee if you need to, but hug, keep hugging and maybe extend the arms. Crescent warrior. Always can lower the back knee if you need to. Good. Touch down and step forward. Uttanasana. Now I'm going to have you move your blocks forward so that you're kind of in an L shape here. So bring the blocks right under the shoulders. Good. And then I'm going to have you bend your knees slightly. Think rib cage back sits bones back and apart to lengthen the spine, and then extend the right leg. And think long, long spine. Maybe keep a little baby bend in the back leg, and then maybe bring hands to heart center. You decide, you know, if you can't find the balance, like I'm trying, then just keep the hands on the blocks. Good, and bring the foot down. Take a breath. And extend the left leg. Make sure you feel really stable in this foot. You're, you have balance in front to back of the foot. You're using all parts of the foot. It's like you're hugging the legs and feet towards each other. You have the rib cage back. You're moving the sits bones back and apart. been having a little problem with vertigo lately, so this is a good challenge for me. Good. Bring the foot down and come on up to standing. Take a breath or two. Now we're going to move the blocks off to the side and find your blankets again. And you decide, you know, if you want one or two blankets or even three. I'm gonna stick with one for this next little sequence. I have really open hamstrings. I've been blessed with that. So, um, so that's what I do. 
So extend both your legs long and find that place where you're sitting slightly in front of those sits bones. Draw your rib cage back and lengthen up through your spine. And then bend your left knee or your right knee and interlace your hands around the shin. Now, if this is hard for you and it feels like you're rounding your back to do this, add height. And then I want you to pull back and up with your hands and think rib cage back, sits bones stay back and apart. I keep that curve in my low back. And then I'm just gonna wrap my left elbow and bring the right hand out to the side. And then slowly with your breaths, think every inhale, I'm gonna keep that connection in my core and maybe the exhale I twist. Both sits bones stay grounded and down. So every inhale, length, curve stays, rib cage back, every exhale. Appreciate the twist. Don't let your head get in ahead. You just think my core is the important thing here. I want my chin to stay drawing back. Good, and then unwind. Oh, that feels good, right? Stretch that leg long. I'm gonna move back a little bit so you can see me better. And then we'll switch sides. So now bend the left knee. Make sure that the sits bone and the heel are in the same plane. Think rib cage back, sits bones back and apart to lengthen, and then interlace. Pull back and up a little bit, and then think really active feet. Even this foot that's extended, I'm really activating the muscles on that leg and hugging to the midline. And then maybe I wrap, bring the hand back, and do the twist. So every inhale, thank God, keep the curve, I lengthen. Every exhale, I twist. Keep breathing. Every inhale, lengthen. Every exhale, twist. I want you to feel really super stable. Notice how I'm not leaning to the side to do this. I'm just lengthening up to do this. So the twist is right in the core. Just stretching out those muscles. One more breath. And come on back to center. Good. Now bring your feet wide. And what happens to me a lot when I do this is I'll find that my, my back rounds and my feet turn out. So I want you to think kneecaps, toes point the same direction, which is up. You might have to keep a little baby bend in the knees. I'm gonna hug the feet and legs towards each other. Keep the rib cage connected and moving back and then keep the sits bones back and apart. Should feel a lot of work on the inner thigh, in the core. Good, now if that feels good and easy and you wanna go deeper, then you just kinda of slowly walk your hands forward. This is called Upa Vista Konasana. I love the name of this one, that's why I have to say it. Keep thinking, rib cage back, sits bones back and apart, hug the feet and legs, and fold. And please make your way on back up. Bring the legs together. Come on off your blanket and lay on your back again. I'm gonna have you bring your feet wide, like right to the edge of your sticky mat. And bring your arms to cactus. So your knees are up. I want you to think the rib cage stays back, but I'm gonna try and find that curve in the low back. And then I'm just gonna bring the left knee towards the right ankle, keeping that curve, keeping that connection. 
should feel like a really nice stretch. Next, inhale, bring the knee up. And exhale, switch sides. So keep the curve, keep the connection in the core. Just feel like you're stretching out those muscles around your hip. The left knee stays straight up, right knee comes down towards the left ankle. Next, inhale, bring the knee up. And exhale, bring both knees now to the right side. But keep that curve, keep the connection. And next, inhale, bring both knees up. And exhale, both knees to the left. Next, inhale, both knees up. And wiggle the feet a little bit closer together. And bring the soles of the feet towards each other. Now keep, keep the rib cage strong. Keep the curve and let the knees open wide. I like to bring my hands on my belly or my inner thigh. This is, this is called Supta Baddha Konasana, lying down cobbler's pose. Let me show you what it looks like this way so you can see. So I'm, I'm trying to activate the feet and legs, keeping the rib cage back, keeping the curve to open the, the knees wide. Keep the spine nice and long. And then with an inhale, bring the knees together. Bring the feet right under the knees now. And bring your right knee up to that 90 degrees. And bring it in as close as you can so you can interlace the hands behind the right thigh. And then press the thigh into your hands and see if you can find that curve in the low back. So you're pressing thigh into hands. Your arms are full length. You're flexing the foot. You have the rib cage connected. You have the curve. And then just see if this feels super easy. Maybe you can extend the leg. Don't let anything else change. Or maybe you Stretch it up just a little bit. You decide if you can keep that curve, you're probably okay. And then just see what happens if I slowly straighten the right leg. May not straighten all the way. You just see what happens and then point and flex your foot a few times. Maybe make a big circle with your big toe and release that foot. Bring the right foot flat, bring the left knee up, interlace, press, keep the curve, keep the connection. See about extending the right leg. If you have really tight hamstrings, you're not gonna be able to extend the right leg and keep that thigh down. So you keep pressing, keep thinking curve here, really connected through the core. And then see, maybe you can straighten the leg. Point, flex, point, flex. Big circle with the big toe. And then release that foot to the mat. Just hug both knees in, like you're kind of rolling up into a little ball. And just very Slowly kind of roll side to side, just massaging the low back area. And then take a hold of just your kneecaps. Press your knees away from you until you feel that curve come back in your low back. And it feels like your feet are just kind of dangling there. Your arms are full length. And then just a little pressure down on your knees through your femur bone into your pelvis. 
And again, just kind of rock side to side a few times. This time it'll feel like you're massaging your buttocks muscles. And then now we're going to the final pose. So just stretch your legs out. Take them a little bit wider than hip distance. And just kind of shake the legs back and forth a few times. And then relax them and let them just fall open to wherever they will. And then I want you to just notice, do you have the curve here? If not, push into your elbows, just draw the shoulder blades underneath a little bit so you have that curve. And then bring the arms out to your sides, palm facing up. And just relax them now, both your left arm and your right arm. And please close your eyes. And just like we did at the beginning, turn your thoughts to your breath. And this time, going to walk you through a little bit of a, a body relaxation. This is the final pose called Shavasana. And the whole goal of the pose is to relax every muscle in your body. So think about the muscles on your scalp and your head. And with your next exhale, just relax them a little bit. On the inhale, think of the muscles on your forehead. And on the exhale, relax those muscles. Loosen up any knitted skin between the eyebrows. Soften the eyes. Let the eyeballs just relax in the sockets. Next exhale. Let go of any tension you feel in your jaw. It's almost like the jaw just kind of slides back into the, so into the socket. Maybe your teeth part slightly. Next exhale, relax your shoulders and your neck. Then your arms, your hands. Your belly, your low back. Just think of the pelvis where your legs attach. There's so many muscles and ligaments there. Just See if you can imagine in your mind's eye, just relaxing all of those all around the hip socket, front and back. Relax your quadricep muscles and your thighs, your hamstring muscles. your shins, your calves, your ankles, and your feet. And then just notice every part of your body that's touching the floor. And just allow yourself to sink a little deeper into the floor and relax a little further, almost like you're melting, spreading out. totally supported, but yet able to relax every single part, including the skin. And then just for, for um, good sake, Scan your body one more time, just searching out any lingering tension, muscle energy, and consciously letting it go with the exhalation. And 
And as you continue to relax, I just wanted to read to you a poem by Kitty O'Meara. It's entitled, Relevant to Today's Times. And it has something to do with our COVID <laughs> situation. She says, and people stayed home and read books and listened and rested and exercised and made art and played and learned new ways of being and stopped and listened deeper. Someone meditated, someone prayed, someone danced, someone met their shadow and people began to think differently and people healed and in the absence of people who lived in ignorant ways, dangerous, meaningless, and heartless, even the earth began to heal. And when the danger ended and people found each other, grieved for the dead people, and they made new choices and dreamed of new visions and created new ways of life, and healed the earth completely, just as they were healed themselves. Begin to wiggle fingers and toes. Just becoming aware of the body again. Maybe move your head side to side. And slowly draw your knees in towards your chest. And just roll to your right side. Maybe let your arm, your head rest on your right arm. I have you move slowly like this so that as you change positions, it's not such a shock for your body. And then keeping your legs heavy, just use your arms to press on up to a seated position and find that nice seat up on one, two, three blankets, whatever works best for you. Please close your eyes again and just focus on your breath. Feel the cool inhalation and the warmer exhalation. And please bring hands to heart center. Just bow your head towards your own heart. Maybe even touch the heart area with your thumbs. I recognize and bow to the beautiful light within each of you. Namaste. Thank you so much for trying this today. Have a fabulous rest of your day and hope to see you really soon.